Good morning. I just got up and um, I am starting my egg fest today. Gonna try to do three days. I'm actually doing it with Lindsay, so that will be fun. But the reason I'm getting on so early, right after I rolled out of bed, is because one of the rules of the egg fast, at least there's there's different rules floating around, but I've seen this one several times, so I think it's one of the rules, like the main rules, is you have to eat an egg within 30 minutes of waking up. I don't usually eat within 30 minutes of waking up. I do drink my coffee within 30 minutes of waking up. So my thought was the best way to get my egg in is to do egg coffee. And actually I was just talking to Amy the other day uh, from The Angel's Journey about egg coffee and how she just loves it and how I need to give it another chance. I tried it um, quite some time ago and didn't love it, but I don't think I, I had it enough to decide really if I loved it or not. I think I just had it the one time. I'm gonna go over the other rules of the egg fast here soon after I wake up a little bit, but one of the other ones is you have to have at least uh, one tablespoon of butter or oil or an ounce of cheese with each egg. So I'm gonna make my egg coffee with one egg and one tablespoon of butter and we'll see how it is. I'm trying to remember how Amy does this because I've seen her do it so many times on her videos and I'm just kind of going off memory. I have my coffee made here. I'm gonna crack my egg into my cup. I'm using my, my egg cup. How appropriate is that? I think you wanna be blending when you add the hot coffee because if you just crack the egg into the hot coffee, you might get egg drop soup, which I'll probably have to try on our egg fast here, but I don't want it for breakfast in my coffee. All right, and then um, this is the butter I am using. It is very good. One tablespoon of butter. I'm gonna get this started blending and try to dump the coffee without making a mess. That's the first time this dial has come in handy. I'm always like, why would I do anything but high? For the egg coffee, the low came in handy. So frothy. Let's give this a taste test. So frothy. I don't think I showed you how frothy it was. It's like a latte taste test. Oh my goodness. Okay, taste test. That's pretty good. I'm trying to remember how I tried it before. If I added additional fat or if I just tried to do an egg. And maybe I just tried to do an egg and it was not as good because it didn't have a tablespoon of butter in it. Yeah, I could do this. I think I will probably be doing this for the, the full three days. All right, it's getting close to 10.30 and I am ready to eat. And um, I'm gonna go over all of the rules of the egg fast here in a minute, but I'm gonna make my meal first um, and eat it first because I'm actually really hungry. So I'm gonna do two eggs and I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna have an ounce of this Kerrygold Irish cheddar on the side. So you have an ounce of cheese or a tablespoon of butter or oil per egg. So I'm gonna have two eggs cooked in one tablespoon of oil, and then have an ounce of cheese on the side to nibble on. I think I'm just gonna do scramble. We'll keep it simple. So for seasoning, I'm just going to add a little bit of smoked salt and a little bit of black pepper. And this looks like a pretty tiny meal, but it is very high fat, so I think it'll be filling. And then the other nice thing about the egg fast is you're required to eat every three to five hours. So you don't have to, you know, go for a seven hour fast or something after this. You can just keep on eating. I have been really enjoying our porch <laughs> meals that we've been enjoying together. It's been so nice. Obviously the nice weather makes them possible, but uh, it's so wonderful. Okay, so I am going to dig into this and then we will chat a little bit about egg fast rules.
that meal was very tasty. That Irish cheddar, the Kerrygold Irish cheddar, so good. I also wanted to give you a real quick update on the egg coffee this morning. The first few sips I liked and it was good, but as soon as it started to cool down a little bit, it started tasting a little more eggy to me. And I, I didn't really care for it. I didn't really care for it. I tried, but it was, it just was too much. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just more sensitive to the egg flavor. I'm not sure. But um, I think I was trying to decide what I'm going to do uh, for my coffee because I don't think I'm going to do the egg coffee the next couple of days. I just don't think I can do it. And I have my MCT oil powder, which um, I was like going back and forth about, about using because to make a fat into a powder, they have to use some kind of like a binder and there's a little bit of acacia fiber in there. I'm kind of thinking I'm not worried about it. I saw with the sardine challenge that my ketones were still able to go up even though I was having that MCT oil powder with the acacia fiber and then MCT oil, you know, is good for boosting ketones. So hopefully any, you know, bad thing that happens from the, that tiny, tiny bit of acacia fiber would be mitigated by the MCTs pushing the the ketones up. So I think I'm just going to stick with my uh, MCT oil powder in my coffee. I was, so I was reading a whole bunch of different people's rules about the egg fast because it's been around for a long time. And there are a lot of different people that have done you know, sets of rules and they don't all exactly match. If anyone does know the actual first person to have created the egg fast and what their rules were for it, please let me know. Um, if you have a link to a blog post or something, I would love to see that. So I kind of just took all of the things from the different things I read. Um, basically rules are eat at least six eggs per day, eat one egg within 30 minutes of waking up in the morning. Uh, with each egg, so per egg, you need to have uh, one tablespoon of butter or other kind of fat or an ounce of cheese. And there was a little bit of discrepancy on this rule. Some said ounce of cheese per egg. Some said half an ounce of cheese per egg. And then there was one that I read that said one ounce of cheese per egg, but no more than three ounces of cheese per day. And that one made a lot of sense to me um, because I think if I were to eat, if I ate like, you know, eight eggs in a day and then eight ounces of cheese with it, I think that's a little bit too much cheese. So I like the idea of putting that limit of three ounces on there. So I think I'm going to go with that. Next rule is eat every three to five hours. One bonus rule that I saw in several of them, and it was kind of like optional, was add at least a tablespoon of MCT oil as some of your fat throughout the day. And I think if I'm doing my MCT oil powder in my coffee, if I have two coffees in a day, that's about a tablespoon. So I think I'm going to have that count for my MCT oil allotment for the day. And if I'm remembering correctly, I think that is everything. Like I said this morning, I am doing this egg fast with Lindsay. So that will be fun to have somebody to commiserate with and bounce ideas off of. She's done egg fasts many times. She really likes them. And um, so she has a lot of info on her channel about egg fasts. Also, Ketogenic Woman, she has done egg fasts before and has some different recipes and different things. She always comes up with such creative recipes for challenges like this. The other recipe I was thinking I would try to whip up today, because I think it'll be helpful for the whole challenge, is Chris Cooking Nashville's Butter Mayo. So Butter Mayo has been around for a while, and there's a lot of recipes out there. But Chris figured out a way to make it stay spreadable, because you know how butter like gets hard in the fridge? Um, and so people would make butter mayo and if it was just left in the fridge, you pull it out and it's hard. And, um, he figured out a way just by like changing the way you put the ingredients in the recipe to keep it spreadable. I have not tried it yet. Lindsay tried it and she said it worked great. Um, so I'm going to whip up a batch of that. Hopefully I could show you that in this video. And I think that'll be really handy to have throughout this challenge, you know, doing like egg salad or different things like that. Oh, the other thing I'm going to have to do during the challenge is Lindsay's fried boiled eggs. It's, you know, 
brilliance. I did want to give another update on ketones. So I told you about my ketones yesterday um, on my second regular eating day, higher protein eating day after the sardine fast. I am still very encouraged to see that my ketones are staying at a higher level than um, previous before the sardine fast. Before the sardine fast, I could hardly get up above um, 0.5. And since the sardine fast for the last three days, I have been hovering around, it's somewhere between 0.5 and 1.0. So that's definitely an increase for me. I'm really happy that the work I did in the sardine fast to get my ketones up does like continue. It didn't just, I didn't just go back to baseline as soon as I started eating normally again. And then one trend that I have been noticing, and I've already mentioned it a couple of times, I think, but it just keeps happening. So it's really fascinating is when I wake up in the morning, typically I'm around like 0.7 the last two mornings or the last three mornings, really. I've been around 0.7 to 1.0 and then I get my coffee. I go make my coffee. I sit down as I'm drinking my coffee. I can feel like it's not, I don't really get caffeine jitters anymore, but it's kind of like I can just feel in my chest like this energy. <laughs> um, and maybe it is partly due to the caffeine, but I'm also noticing that at that time, my ketones start going up. And every morning I have this, this rise in ketones. And when I was on the sardine fast, it rose all the way to 1.7 and 1.6 the next day. Now that I'm not on the sardine fast, it's like right raising to like one or 1.1 and it'll be up there for a little bit and then it'll start going back down and it'll be back down around like 0.7 to 0.9 ish. Um, but that's really interesting. And I, I've been curious about like why, why I'm having that at that time in the morning, uh, because I've tried to like repeat the coffee to see if the coffee and the MCT oil powder was having that effect. But then later in the day, it didn't. So I'm thinking it has to do with like the time of the day and like my cortisol and the dawn phenomenon, like being finished and maybe the coffee as well. Who knows? Anyways, that's been a really interesting thing to see. And then so yesterday, um, I had that little jump up to like a 1.1. And then I was pretty steady around like 0.7 all day. So still staying at a higher level than before the sardine fast. And then after I had dinner of that um, stir fry, beef stir fry, I saw my ketones go down. But then again, I saw them go up overnight again. So that is the info about the ketones. It's been really fascinating to see. And I'm just really encouraged about how it seems like if I put in some work to get into a deeper state of ketosis and doing that involves some things that I don't want to do long term, like restricting protein. But if I do them for a short period of time, the carryover effect is a real thing. So I don't necessarily have to stay low protein all of the time to get, you know, a higher level of ketones on average. That's been really, really cool. And I'm really excited about learning that and figuring out how to use that to my advantage in my diet. Another thing I wanted to mention, I keep having things come to my mind that I need to tell you, um, as far as weight. So I told you over the three days of the sardine challenge, I lost 4.9 pounds. I went from 161.5 to 156.6 which is the lowest I've been in quite some time. And then the next day uh, after I ate regularly, I had the keto chow, I had the big steak and the carnivore mashed potatoes and the coleslaw and like a huge meal, 2,000 2, calories. Um, I woke up and I was the exact same weight, 156.6. Then yesterday I had a regular day of eating full of protein, had some dairy, um, just a very regular day of eating for me. Woke up this morning, exactly 156.6 again. So, so far, you know, two days now, I have maintained my weight loss from the sardine challenge. And so going from eating a 1,000 calories a day for those three days to eating around 2,000 calories a day for the last two days, so far, so good. I have not had a weight rebound yet. I just wanted to throw that in there for anybody who is curious about that. 
So I headed to the kitchen to make the butter mayo and I recorded all of it for you guys. But as I was editing, I realized how incredibly long this video was becoming. So I decided to take that footage and make it into its own video. I have already uploaded it and I will have it linked at the end of this video in the cards. I will also have it linked down in the description. So as soon as this video is over, go ahead over and check out that video and you can see my experience making Chris's butter mayo. Spoiler alert, it's very good. While I'm in the kitchen prepping, I'm just going to go ahead and get some boiled eggs going. I'm going to use my steamer basket. I love that for boiled eggs. I'm going to put a cup of water on the bottom of my Instant Pot. And I love using my little BB-8 Instant Pot for this. You can fit more than a dozen eggs in it. So it's not like you have to do just a tiny amount. Um, I'm trying to think how many I should do. Maybe, maybe eight. I think that should be good. Let's see, that's three, six, seven. I was trying not to get the giant ones or the tiny ones. I'm gonna pop the lid on that, put it on ceiling. The way I always have done boiled eggs in the Instant Pot, um, and you do have to vary it depending on your location and your altitude, so it's one of those things you kind of have to play with to find what exactly works for you in your area. But I do um, high pressure for six minutes. And as soon as it stops cooking, I release the pressure and then plunge them straight into ice water, let them cool completely, and then they're beautiful, perfect. They peel so easily. All right, six minutes just finished. I'm gonna quick release the pressure. Okay. Oh, one of them exploded. Oh well. I just do that to cool off the bottom of the bath plate and then I can touch it. And there's our explosion, our egg explosion. Getting my electrolytes mixed up for the day. I am having my current favorite, grapefruit. It is 3 p.m. and I am ready to eat another meal. Um, so about four and a half hours between meals. I am going to do fried hard boiled eggs. So I'm taking a tablespoon of butter and melting it in my pan. And then I am going to um, cut my boiled eggs in half and fry them up. My husband found the boiled eggs in the fridge and he already ate Three? He ate three. I should have made more. Beautiful eggs. So um, on the side, since I have one tablespoon of butter that I'm cooking them in, uh, my other tablespoon of fat is going to be a tablespoon of the butter mayo. And I will, I guess, use it as a dip or something. I thought that would be yummy. I pulled it out of the fridge and it is like... Um, firming up so it looks really good. So check this out. It's still soft as far as mayo goes. Um, it's pretty flowy, but I think that's better than solid out of the fridge, but it'd be a perfect base for like salad dressing. So I just licked my finger and this stuff is really good. The flavor is amazing. I'm gonna add a little bit of onion salt just for an added punch of flavor. Mm, that looks really good. That looks really good. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of smoked salt to these eggs. Oh, and since there was a lot of the butter left in the pan, I um, and I didn't wanna use it because it was kind of browned, I just added an extra half a tablespoon of the butter mayo here for dipping. All right, meal number two. I can tell you this butter mayo is super good. I'm imagining all kinds of like dressings dressings and sauces with it. It is so delicious. And I'm not a huge mayo fan. Like I'm not just one of those that puts mayo on anything. It has to be part of like 
a dressing, but this is good enough that I would just use it as it is. Mm. This is a good meal. And I am including seltzers on this challenge as well. Hopefully the egg fast police won't come after me on this one. I'm actually still feeling a little bit hungry after that, so I am going to grab one more egg and I think I'm gonna grab another ounce of cheese and snack on that. And oh, you know what? Actually, I might make myself a cup of coffee with my MCT oil powder as part of my fat. So I'll have an egg, I'll have maybe like half an ounce of cheese, and then my serving of MCT oil powder would count as like half of a tablespoon of fat. So I think I'm gonna do that. One more fried boiled egg half an ounce of cheese and coffee with the equivalent of half a tablespoon of MCT oil powder. It is 7.20 p.m. and um, I need to eat one more meal and I am going to make Bella's um, egg pudding. This is a great recipe for the egg fast because it's super simple, just eggs and water as the base and then you can top it with the different fat. I'm going to use some butter. Um, so I'm going to do the four egg version. I do have a video on this recipe and it gives you the, uh, let's see, the four egg version, the two egg version, and the six egg version. Um, I probably won't eat it all. I'll probably have a little bit of leftovers, but I was just going to eat as much as I need. Um, so basically what you do is you put as many eggs in to your measuring cup as you want. And I'm going to just mix those up real quick. And then you look on here where the eggs fall and you just double it with water or you can use other liquids like coffee or broth, different things like that. You can do almond milk or cream if you want to make it really decadent. Um, so this is just under a cup. So I will put it just under two cups. Um, when I fill it up with water. And now I'm just gonna mix it up for a, whoops, I wanna splash it. Just gonna mix it up for a little while just to make sure all those little chunks in there are smooth. You can also, you know, use an immersion blender if you want. I am finding that the egg fast really requires an immersion blender. Obviously it doesn't require one, but one has come in handy with pretty much everything I've made today. So. Definitely recommend an immersion blender if you're going to take on the egg fast, unless you want to do the pure version of raw eggs. Would that be the most pure version? Just take an egg and crunch the shell and eat it whole. If you want to do a true egg fast, that is. Now, this is the bowl I'm going to be using. You can use stainless steel or glass. Just as long as it's oven safe, it can go into the Instant Pot. So I'm just going to pour that in there. Now I'm going to cover this with foil, and yes, I know that foil is going to kill me, so the foil police need not interject. I'm going to use my mini Instant Pot again, which I love, and this little bowl fits down in there nicely. There's my little trivet, and I got about one cup of water here. Lock the lid, make sure it's on sealing, and then we are going to do pressure cook. I can't remember if it's low or high pressure. I need to check. So it is low pressure. So I'm going to hit pressure cook and I have it. It's on low there, but you press pressure level to change between the low and high pressure. And then the time is 10 minutes. So I'm going to let it cook and then um, do an immediate or quick pressure release as soon as the cook time is done. So I pulled it out and it wasn't quite done, but I don't feel like putting it back in because I'm afraid I'll just overcook it. And this, there's like a delicate balance <laughs> that you want. So what I'm going to do actually is just blend it with my immersion blender and just make more of a silky smooth pudding rather than the, the Asian style egg pudding. So I'm going to put about half of this into my bowl. I don't know if this was the most appetizing way to do this, but we'll see. Um, and so that's two eggs worth. And then I will top it with butter. I'm going to just top it with a tablespoon of butter um, because I'm also having a ounce of fresh mozzarella cheese. I thought that sounded good. Just have a little something savory with this that I'm going to make sweet. So on the different rule lists, I saw sweeteners as being okay. Uh, they said no sugar alcohols, but things like allulose, stevia, monk fruit were fine. So I am going to use some of this Rx Sugar Maple Syrup 
it's just allulose um, and some maple flavor so I am fine with that um, so I'm gonna add that and then I'm gonna add my tablespoon of butter mm, not the most appetizing thing I've ever eaten but it's not sardines so I'm good and then um, here is my fresh mozzarella it is pretty depressing to find out how little a serving of cheese is that's an ounce it's very sad but I'm going to enjoy it anyway so that was really not bad um, it could have used like a pinch of salt and some cinnamon um, the maple was really nice though it was good and you know because you're adding the water to it it like doubles the volume <laughs> so it feels like you're eating you know a full bowl of something rather than just a couple little eggs um, I'm not sure if that was enough I'm trying to decide I could have another boiled egg and um, some cheese or something if I well I can't I because I was gonna do only three ounces of cheese per day and I've already had two and a half so I could only have half um, I am really enjoying the cheese I've been doing less cheese recently because I've been doing um, less dairy so I've been really that that's been making this uh, this first egg fast day really really nice I don't know if that'll mess up my results or anything um let me know if you've had any experience with that doing egg fasts with cheese Lindsay was saying that she's gonna do not as much cheese so um because she's she's the egg fast expert and she's gonna try to do not not so much cheese um so anyways i'm just trying to enjoy it um and we'll see we'll see i did see my ketones jump up that was really cool I saw my ketones this evening before I ate, like as I was getting stuff out to eat. They had been sitting at somewhere between 0.4 and 1.0 for the whole day, which again is higher than my regular. So I'm still, you know, very happy with that. Um, but like, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, that's kind of the range it was in all day. And then right before, um, uh, like right when I was starting to think about dinner and make dinner, they jumped up to 1.4. So that was really cool. Oh, I told you talking. I thought you were talking to someone. I am talking to someone. Oh, I thought you were talking to someone out here. Like that's not I'm talking to many someones. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Bye -bye. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys something really cool. Um, I'm going to show you something really cool. 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 I'm and that's still not bad. Like that's nothing to really be worried about, but it's just interesting to, to watch the different trends. And I believe that my blood sugar is coming down. I think my average is still going to be in the eighties today. Uh, but I expect that if I continue, you know, for tomorrow and the next day, I will see my blood sugar go down similar to the sardine fast. So in the sardine fast, I am trying to remember, but I don't think I saw my ketones go up above 1.0 until the next morning after the first day. So um, the fact that I got to see my ketones go up to 1.4 this evening, that was really uh, cool to see. Now, I know that if you're really going to do a scientific study, like all the variables have to be the same at the beginning of every you know challenge. But unfortunately, I can't go into a time machine and go back to exactly how my body was when I started the sardine fast and just do the egg fast from there. That would be a really good um, scientific experiment. But unfortunately, this is all I have to work with. Um, so I, you know, I already had a little bit higher ketones from the sardine fast. And so that's, that's what I'm working with. So I'm, it's not a perfect uh, comparison, the egg fast to the sardine fast, but I think that the information is interesting. I hope you guys find it interesting. And I will just keep sharing what I can, even though there are some, you know, variables I can't really account for. I'm kind of feeling like I don't need any more food at this point. So I am going to call it good for the evening on the food front. I might have like a seltzer water or maybe a tea, um, but I think I'm going to call it good on the food. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, Freddy. What did I bring for you today? You could lick my bowl if you want. It's got eggs. <laughs>